one of the things that you see with bands often is that, you know, you, you can sometimes tell how a session with a band is going to go when you say, okay, yeah, what tempo do you want for the project? And they're like, you know, I'll give you a click track. And the band's like, um, it's like, okay. And it's fine not to have a tempo for a project, but sometimes people want to add loops, MIDI stuff, print out notation, and have that correlation to the bar and beat of a grid. So that could be problematic sometimes if you don't, if you kind of didn't record to a click track. So what you see is a lot of people making the band record to the click track, not because it's the right thing to do musically, because it's so much easier for the engineer. So let's say we'll take a, a recording, maybe something like this that we've probably heard before. And we turn on a click track. Now we're gonna say, you know, this is a terrible song because you didn't follow the click track. No, it sold like, you know, eight billion copies or something ridiculous, right? But there's no correlation. So let's say it starts off with the 12 string guitar part. So what you can do for MIDI or audio parts is I'm gonna come right over here and say, let's do tempo detection. So what I'm gonna do is analyze the 12 string guitar part because that starts off the song. And now we'll just hit play. And it's now figured out the tempo. And that tempo is varying every single beat. So I'm gonna come here, and is, is that wrong? Is that horrible? No, it's no problem at all. So we'll blow up the tempo track here a little bit. Now, what's kind of interesting is you could now just say, okay, we're gonna close out our tempo editor. And what I wanna do is kind of just find where the downbeat falls. So, and then it gives us a, it kind of figures out where the beats are. So we'll just say, okay, this is our four, four bar right here. All right, now let's say I want the band to actually play with the click track. I want them to play more steadily. I want to take the existing performance here. And what I can do is I'm going to select all the audio events. We'll come to our project menu. And at this point, we're going to say um, from the audio, and this is under advanced because it's such a cool feature, set definition from tempo. And what this is going to do is basically, you know, we see a lot of programs that can deal with a one static tempo value as a timestamp. This is taking every single tempo change and applying that metadata to the audio files. So if I'm here and we're listening to our original tempo, I'd say, let's listen to it at 120 beats a minute. Let's listen to it at 132 beats a minute. 144. 96. The best part about this multi-track when you listen to it is this. Let's jump back to our original tempo. I never heard that before. <laughs> so let's say I just want the band to speed up right here. I could just take the existing performance and just, oh, let's speed this part up here. Or just kind of draw in. So I say I just want it faster here and slow down. tempo of audio, MIDI, and just do automatic tempo detection that easily. Now let's say we wanted to give our prod, we, we are working with someone in like traffic in Los Angeles area, sucks, right? You know, let's say you wanted to record someone who lived in Orange County, 
right? Do you want to go down to Orange County or someone want to drive up from Orange County to here? No, no one wants to do that. Or how many times we have great musicians who are just like, they don't have their personal act together. You know, so it's like, you go, like Johnny plays guitar, but Johnny doesn't have a car. So do I want to pick him up? So we came up with this really interesting technology called VST Connect. And before this was almost like, I think if you're really good, you could set it up in 18 mouse clicks. So we wanted to do it much easier. So what this is gonna allow you to do is, Anyone could download a free program from our website or pay $5 for an iPad app called VST Connect Performer. And at this point, you could just say, oh, let's create VST Connect. And now what we do is it's automatically going to do all the setup and routing. At this point, you could just say, okay, we could actually see them on the webcam. I see so many things that are saying they're collaborating now. But really, all they're doing is uploading and downloading files. You know, and that's a big difference. Like I saw this whole marketing campaign for a new live collaboration thing. And they're like, yeah, just like Lennon and McCartney, they collaborated. It's like, no, they didn't upload and download files. They sat and, they sat and communicated in real time. So what you do is you hit record. The other person just hooks up an audio interface, a microphone or guitar. You hit record. The signal goes out to them. They record. It's all perfectly delay compensated in their headphones. They record it, and then the delay, the signal is sent directly back to your system and recorded directly into your timeline. You don't even have to set up an email account. You don't have to remember one more password that you're going to forget. You know, none of that nonsense. It's, and it's free. Two tracks, free of charge. So, it, real collaboration. So you could actually say, no, change that part when you go to the D chord. I don't like that. Oh, you don't have to download for an hour and say, wow, I didn't like that. And let me try to communicate with that person. Let me call them up and then, you know, all that type of nonsense. So you can have real collaboration there with VST Connect. Now, we also see people sometimes like, oh, I, I, you know, I have to use another program to be compatible, right? You don't have to do that with Cubase because what we do is we have a batch export. So if I have a project with like lots of virtual instruments, MIDI, audio, groups, effects. We could just come here and I could say, when I do my export audio mix down, I could say, take all my output channels, my effects channels, my audio tracks, my groups, my virtual instruments, and make equal length audio files so that Homer Simpson using a Roland VS880 hard disk recorder can line them up at the same time, hit play and have it sound the same. And this is also very important because so many people don't want to give away all their secrets to how they get their sounds. You know, you, I, I watch so many engineers, like, you know, like a lot of R&B guys, and, you know, they're going through, like, you know, they don't use, like, plug-in presets that everyone else buys. You know, they're, they're just, you know, scrounging for, like, you know, oh, there's a new plug-in, and it does this sound. But don't tell anyone, you know, because this is our sound. And, you know, don't tell anyone how easy this is with this plug-in. You know, it's a real underground thing. You know, so... These people don't want to necessarily, you know, give away every trade secret of how they create their sounds. So here they could just render the audio file and that's what they could deliver to the record company, to the film company, and it'll play back in any system and be kind of future proof. And it could just load into other systems that easily. So we think about everything that we've seen with Cubase Pro 8. You know, everything that you saw, include it. Not one thing extra. So if you wanted to do you know, all the user interface enhan enhancements, whether you want to do the docking, where you want to have the plug-in manager, the workspaces, being able to scroll through your inspector. If you wanted to be able to compose with a chord track and come up with new ideas to get out of ruts, if you wanted to have the chord pads to actually be able to perform and record MIDI data intelligently without having a traditional piano keyboard, if you wanted to have all of your different plug-in. So if you want to have the uh, Groove Agent SE for all your drum needs, the VST bass amp, the VST amp rack, if you wanted to be able to do like your tempo manipulation, if you wanted to have all those multi-band plugins, the Quadrafuzz, multi-band envelope shaper, expander, compressor with live mode and independent side chaining, to have new tuners, have new de-esser, the Quadrafuzz, all those different plugins. If you wanted to be able to do all of your mixing, 
so that you could have a full channel strip, to have a large console experience in a software world with all of its conveniences. If you wanted to be able to do monitor switching, if you wanted to be able to have all of your metering, if you wanted to be able to do all of your headphone mixes and have that all directly in the system, you could do that with the control room. If you wanted to do you know, quick links, defined links, or VCA linking, if you wanted to do parallel processing, if you wanted to do all these different routing capabilities, if you wanted to see wave meters, plus have you know, seven different meter types, including R128 metering built in, no extra cost. If you wanted to be able to collaborate with anyone in the world, it doesn't have to be in Orange County, it could be in Ireland, it could be in Australia, it doesn't matter as long as there's an internet connection. Or if you wanted to be able to take all your different projects and deliver them to any format just with one mouse click. So if we think about everything we've seen, everything is included. You know, we're going to be, and someone's going to be winning a copy of this tonight. That's pretty cool. But, and we think about the performance optimizations, the workflow. You can get so much done in one tool, all of your notation, all your MIDI, all of your audio recording, all of your virtual instruments, everything in one unified package. It's really hard to beat Cubase Pro 8. So you think about how compelling those feature sets are how fast the Steinberg development has been going. You know, where you see other companies taking three or four years to come up with a new version, you know, we're, we're like every year adding, you know, significant new enhancements and kind of defining the feature sets for every other DAW to catch up to. So as you see, Steinberg good, everything else bad. <laughs> Keep it simple. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the guys here at Westlake Pro, you know, really take advantage. You know, I get to travel throughout the whole country. There's not many really good pro audio shops around anymore. You know, it's kind of, you know, we see a lot of really bad service with people that don't know what they're talking about in a lot of stores. I think we know, you know, we see those stores, we have those experiences. So when you come to an environment like this where you can have these great clinics, we could have a great environment and an incredibly knowledgeable staff. Take advantage of that resource in your town and really you know, support the resources that are gonna support you. And that makes a big difference. So I'd like to thank Westlake for hosting the event.